Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you, dear students? I, had, I hope you have uh, had a nice day before, and you just thought about the ideas that we had in our lesson, which was the first lesson in influential people. So we're going to start just to revise what we took in the uh, beginning of Unit 2, which was a discussion about these four main characters. We have the first one, uh, Amasi Ortega. We have Mohammed Abdul Latif Jamil. We have Lee Keshing and Steve Jobs. Now we had this uh, graph that we uh, filled in, and we also answered the questions, the comprehension questions that we have on page 21. Now going back to our vocabulary, I gave you a chance just to look up the words and the context that you had and try to relate with uh, other words. So we are going to do our exercise together. We have on page number 21, we have the five words as we mentioned. So let's just start. We have the first one, number one. Not only was Eric an excellent student, so we have your excellent, an excellent student in high school, but he in sports as well. So we have here from the adjective excellent, we know that we have the verb excelled. Number two, he has a blank for being one of the greatest doctors in the field of neurosurgery. So when I say that this person is known to be great, which means that I have, or I'm talking about his reputation. Now, uh, we, uh, the reputation, it can be a good reputation or a bad one. So it is very important that you maintain a good reputation. Number three, my professor is a blank economist who is often quoted in magazines. So if a person is quoted in, magazine, in magazines, this means that this person is prominent. So he is well known. People quote his sayings. So we have here, this person is prominent. We have number four, the charity I donate to help, donate to, sorry, donate to helps to build schools and blank areas. So if you donate or give money, we give money to people who are less fortunate. And we can say that we have here the word impoverished, which is close to the word poor. Now, poor and impoverished are both adjectives. We have the last word, which is known. We have here businessman, and we have here the philanthropist, Suleiman al gives millions of dollars to charities. Now we are going to talk about Suleiman Rache in our reading lesson. Also, he is a very famous and uh, an interesting figure that we are going to discuss. Now, just to check your answers, I hope that they are co all correct. We are going to move on. Now, since we are talking about these figures and what they did in the past, we are going to go back to the past and I'm going to just revise some information with you. Now we have the first personality, Stephen Jobs. He was going to study at college, but he couldn't afford it. Mohammed Abdul Latif Jamil is used to supporting projects and helping people. Is it something new? No, he is used to it. Amasi Ortega used to make clothing in his living room. Now we now know Zara, do you think that this personality still works at home? He used to work at home. Lee Keshing would work 16 hours a day, so he is a millionaire now. But at his very beginnings, he used to work or would work 16 hours a day. Now, these are the sentences that I just read with you. You can see that there are different structures in each sentence. So I gave you different meanings. Now, the first one, used to make clothing. We have the second one, used to. He is used to supporting projects. We have here, he would work. And we have here, the last one, was going to. So here you can see that we have four different structures. These structures are what we are going to study in our grammar lesson in Unit 2. Now we have our objectives. Number one, to deduct the grammar rules from sentences, which we have already done. 
use used to referring to past repeated actions, use be used to referring to habitual actions in the past or present. Number four, use would referring to past repeated actions as well. We have number five, to use was or were going to referring to future plans in the past. We have number six, to apply the correct form of the verb. Now we're going to start. Also, we have here a different graph from the first lesson. Now here you can see that we have one, two, three, four parts. Now these four parts, we are going to discuss the four structures that I mentioned at the very beginning. So let's look or take a look here. We have here the different sentences. Now I did uh, give you this sentence. We have here, Amancio Ortega used to make clothing in his living room. We have here, this is the structure. And note that we have here the base form, make. So we have here, make comes, or any verb comes in the base form. It comes with used to. How about if I turn this sentence into negative? Now I can say the opposite. Amancio Ortega didn't use to make clothing in his living room. So what did you notice here? We have here, it is already colored for you. You can see that we have, of course, didn't, which is the negative. And if you have noticed, we have the D was removed. It was omitted from use. So it becomes used to. Now, we have a man's your take it, it just one, is just one person, which means that he is singular. How about if I turn it into plural? Now, we have here the boys used to practice for the final match. Still, if it is plural, you can see that we have here used to, and we have here the base form, practice. And also, if I turn it into negative, the boys didn't used to play that often before practicing for the final match. You can see that we have the same thing. So either it is singular or plural, you can just turn it into negative and just remove the D from used to. So this is going to be our first structure. The first part, used to plus the base form, which means an action repeated habitually in the past, but not done now. So we have here something that stopped. It happened before, but not now. There's also a note to remove the D from used if the sentence is negative using did. Also, we have this example. Mohamed Abdel Latif Jamil is used to supporting projects and helping people. So as I said, it's not something new. He is used to it. So it means that it is something habitual and it happens all the time. You can see that we have here a little bit, uh, there is a difference in the structure. We have used to, but before used to, there is verb to be, is. So this gives a different meaning, which means that something is habitual. It can be habitual in the past or in the present. And we have your supporting here is a gerund. Do you remember when we discussed gerunds like teasing? We have here, there were gerunds that passed by us that look like a verb, but they are a noun. Now, how about if we turn this sentence into negative, like what we did before? So we have here another sentence. Of course, we can see that there's verb to be and the noun. Now here is the same sentence, but we turned it into negative. So what is the difference? We have our verb is the same, but we have there is negative, isn't. And we have here used to supporting projects. We can see that the verb is the same, the gerund. And what else? What did you notice? You can see that the D remains as it is. So watch out if you are talking about something habitual. And here, the hint is to have a verb to be in the sentence. You leave the D as it is, because we are talking about something as a habit or routine. Also, as we had the singular, we are going to look at the plural. Students are used to taking online classes. So we have, instead of using is, I used are, but it is the same form. We have here used to and plus taking, which is a gerund. Students are not or aren't used to. So you can see that we still have our D. Now, moving on to the second part, we have here in our graph, 
be used to. So here you can see the difference between them. Now used to in the first part plus the base form, but in the second part we have here be used to, which means that something is habitual or it became familiar. Also, we have here a note just to remind you, do not remove the D from used if it is negative using B not. Our third example, we have your Li Keqing. Now we go back to Li Keqing and say that he would work 16 hours a day. So what did you notice here? We have here would and we have here the base form work. Another example, when we were young, we would sit around grandmother and listen to her stories. So is there a difference between singular and plural? You can see from the sentences there, there are no differences between them. We have the same thing, we have would, and we have the base form, which is sit. Moving on, going back to our graph, you can see that we have here would plus the base form. So when you think about it, would is very, very similar to the first form that we had, which is used to. So would talks about an action that happened regularly in the past. And also to give you a note here or a hint, it is similar to used to in habitual action. So we would sit around our grandmother. Did it happen just one time? No, it was something that was habitual. It happened all the time. So we have here, this is going to be our third form. Moving on. We have our fourth example. Stephen Jobs was going to study at college, but he couldn't afford it. Now, do, do you recall when we talked about Stephen Jobs and we said that he was uh, from a uh, very poor family and he couldn't afford to pay the tuition, so he dropped out of college. Now we have the same meaning in the sentence here. He was going to study. Now here, just to look at the structure that we have. We have was shows that something was going to happen or we're talking about something in the, uh, in the past. Going to refers to something in the future. So I am talking about plans that were made for the future, but these plans were made in the past. So we have here, it is a structure that is used also with the base form. So you can see that we have the word steady. We have was going to. And to see the difference between the singular and the plural, we have here an, another sentence. The fashion designers were going to set a date for a big fashion show, but they canceled the date. So they planned something. They were going to set a date. We have here where it shows that we're talking about something in the past, going to planning, but this was something planned and did not happen in the present time. We have our last structure here, was or were going to. So we have here, we're going to use verb to be, but in the past tense, was or were going to, plus the base form, which means the future in the past. I am planning or I planned something for the future and the past. Now for future predictions made in the past or plans that weren't done. So we have this, uh, actually it always happens to us that we plan for something, but at the last minute we change our minds or something just cancels. So we, uh, we can use the structure that we have here. Now you know that we have the complete graph here. We have four different structures. You can see that some of these structures use the base form, some have verb to be, some use a verb to be or one of them uses verb to be but in the past. So you have to pay attention and just look at the, uh, uh, the uh, structures that you have and the read the meaning of the sentence before deciding what to use. Now we're going to start with our exercises. We have on page number 22, I want you please to open your books on page 22. You can see that we have here simple exercises. 
Now we have the first exercise. Complete the sentences with either used to or be used to. Now here, note that when we have the used to, the D between parentheses here, means that you can take it out if we have negative. Use the negative in some cases. So as I just explained, that we are going to decide which one to use. We have here number one. We blank eat at all the best restaurants, but then we started saving more money. So I'm talking about a habit that happened in the past, but now we started saving our money. So think about it. I'm going to give you just a chance here. Now, if I'm talking about something that happened, but doesn't happen now, and we have here eat, a verb in the base form, we can use here the, yes, we have here used to, we used to eat. Number two, she's from Costa Rica, so she blank warm weather all year round. Now Costa Rica is a country that is known to be warm all year round. We can say that this person, she is from Costa Rica. So when she uh, experiences warm weather or hot weather, is it something new? No, it isn't. Because she, think about it. We have here, we can say that she, singular, is used to. So she is used to warm weather. Number three, the bed in my first apartment was so uncomfortable that I blank sleep on the couch. So just imagine the situation. First of all, here from the beginning of the sentence, the bed in my first apartment. So I'm talking about something in the past. Is it my apartment now? No, it is my first. And we have here, the bed was so uncomfortable that what happened, I blank sleep on the couch. And note that we have here, sleep is the base form. So which means that I have here the structure, yes, used to, I used to sleep on the couch. Moving on to number four, Marco blank live with his whole extended family. So we have here, we're talking about Marco and here the hint is in the verb. We have here, live with his whole extended family. So we're talking about something happening in the past and also I'm using used to. Moving on with the exercise. We have number five. Even though he loves his apartment, he blank living alone. So here it happens to a lot of people that they do like their place, they love their houses but there is a problem he blank living alone so even though at the very beginning it gives me an opposite meaning even though he loves his apartment he living alone which one of these structures can you use here so we can turn this one into negative I'm talking about something that has an opposite meaning he isn't used to. So we have here he isn't used to and note that the D remains at his, as it is. Number six, we blank swim in that pond but now it's too polluted. So we swim in that pond. There is a small pond but now the problem is that it is too polluted so we can't swim like before. I'm talking about a habit that happened before so we can say here that we used to swim in that pond. And note also swim is the base form. Moving on to number seven, he likes his new job, but he blank wearing a suit and tie. So also we have here, but, which gives me an opposite meaning. So as a job, he likes the job, but opposite, he wears a suit and tie. So which one did you decide to use? We can say that he, isn't used to. Number eight, she had always excelled in English, so she blank receiving poor grades. So as a subject, she has always excelled in English. She doesn't have a problem with it. We have poor grades gives an opposite meaning. So is it normal for her to take a bad grade or a poor grade? No. 
So here also we are going to use a negative meaning here and we are going to say that she isn't used to receiving. Now note also receiving here is a gerund. We have finished the first exercise. We have the second exercise, page number 23. Page number 23, use the phrases to write sentences about your own childhood. So you have personal answers here, including either would or didn't used to. In some cases, both are possible. Now, for example, we have your help my mother with the cooking. You can say, when I was a child, I used to help my mother with the cooking, or I can say, I would help my mother with the cooking. It has the same meaning. So actually, this is an interesting exercise because it connects to your personal experiences. We have eight exercises in the book. I'm going to do four, and you have four for homework. So we're going to start with the first one. Go barefoot in summer. So have you ever experienced going barefoot without shoes in summer? Just think about it for a moment. You can relate using used to or would. When would you do that? Just go back to your memories and recall incidents that happened to you and give your own examples. They don't have to be the same. So we have the first one. I'm going to give you an example. When I was young, I always used to go barefoot in summer. So I used the same exercise, but I uh, changed the sentence when I was young. You can give your own examples. There are many examples that you can recall. Number two, play with my friends for hours. Now, this is something that most of us experienced, that we would play with our friends with, uh, for hours. And here you can see that I used the word uh, would spontaneously. So we have here the sentence, when I was little, I would play with my friends for hours. So here, this is something interesting to know that a lot of our structures, we just go with the flow and we use these structures even if we're not concentrating on them. Number three, like candy. Also, we're going to use either used to or would. So we have here, as an example, I didn't used to like candles, sorry, candies when I was a child. Now here, this is an interesting sentence. Why? Because I have the negative. Who doesn't like candy? So some people, they, yes, they don't like candy. So I can have the negative, but don't forget to take out the D. I didn't used to like candies when I was young. Number four, build castles in the sand. Now also, this is an enjoyable uh, memory that some of us recall. You can say, for example, when we used to go to the beach, we would build castles in the sand. And if you say we used to build castles in the sand, it's the same meaning. Now we have here these four. You have your homework ready. We have another part. Complete the first part of the sentence using was or were going to when, and your own ideas. So this time we are going to focus on using either was or were going to. Also, we have an example. We have it in the book, but then I found a better one. So here, this is the second part. You are going to think about the first part. We have your I was going to take the first job I was offered, but then I found a better one. And you can give other examples as well. Moving on, we have here three exercises or three examples we're going to do together. Number one, but we were too tired. So as I mentioned that this is the second part. But we, together, plural, we were too tired. So we have here the exercise we can say, we were going to watch a film tonight, but we were too tired. So we had to plan and you canceled. Number two, but he lost his credit card. Also, just imagine a situation when a person was going to do something, but he lost his credit card. So as an example, we have here, he was going to pay for dinner, but he lost his credit card. So he was planning, but he lost it. 
we have number three, but you weren't home. So we have here, just think about the many situations that you were reaching some of your, uh, your relatives or your friends, but they weren't available or they weren't home. So you can just imagine a conversation happening between one of you, uh, you and one of your uh, uh, friends or uh, your relatives, and you can say that, for example, I was going to ask you to go out tonight, but you weren't home. So there was a plan to invite someone, but you couldn't find them or you couldn't reach them. So we have here also a sentence using a future plan that didn't happen. You are going to also complete from the last exercise the three last or the three later uh, exercises that we have in the book. So uh, you have a lot to do. We have the homework, which is on page number 23. So please complete your homework and do your tasks that we are going to revise in our next lesson, inshallah. Our outline for our grammar lesson, we used the forms, four forms. We used used to, we used be used to, we used would, and we used was and were going to. So as we mentioned, you can see that we have here the four different forms and each one has a different meaning and a different way to use here it is easy to apply so just you can use actually the same way to just use your graphs and apply them to your sentences so see you soon in our next lesson be ready <laughs>